A few weeks ago, I did a video outlining all of my Tom Ford fragrances ranked from worst to best. As I've said, those words are rather loose. When I say worst, I don't mean bad. I mean my least favorite to my most favorite, but I don't think you guys are going to click on my favorites. You guys want to know the objective best and worst. At least that's what the algorithm tells me. But if I'm mistaken, let me know down in the comments. Nonetheless, this is going to serve to be an entertaining video. I'm ranking all of my Amouage fragrances. I have 11 bottles here, kind of a random selection. And obviously with only 11, there are plenty that I'm missing. So as I said in my Tom Ford video, if you don't see a particular fragrance or your favorite fragrance here, it means I don't have it and or I don't like it. Maybe I haven't even tried it. But just know that this could not be an expansive, all-encompassing list of every single Amouage fragrance ever created. There's a ton of fragrances from the brand that I still have yet to get. Many of them I've tried, I just don't have them yet. So I'm just getting it out of the way in a very exhaustive manner, you'll have to forgive me, but there's many people out there who just don't understand the concept that reviewers don't own every single fragrance ever. Let's move on. I'll be ranking these 11 fragrances from Amouage according to my taste. I've done ranking videos before and I did it more practically, which is based on number of wears because I keep track of all my wearings. And honestly, I find that to be the most fun way of putting these videos together. But I do think that my taste plays a role here and I wanted to give it a chance to shine. So these fragrances are not ranked in order of how often I wear them. They are simply ranked in their scents and how their scents affect me. So with all that out the way, let's dive right into it. At the 11th spot kind of a technicality i have yet to actually fully wear this fragrance i have tried it on my hand once and i'm not sold on it yet it took me like four or five hours for me to start actually enjoying it up to that point i didn't necessarily find it pleasant but i look forward to getting to know it better as the weather cools down because this does call for cooler weather this is the newest from the house they call it king blue when you first spray this on it's stinky. There's some really strong upfront skanky oud, very real oud in here. So if you haven't quite experienced real oud yet, it can have this edge to it, borderline fecal. Now, I don't consider it disgusting or anything like that, but it is a scent profile that I don't feel comfortable just walking out into the world wearing practically. I can appreciate it in an experimental way, like if I'm smelling it just for myself, then I can dive into it as a frag head and whatnot. But being a person with a scent in the world outside of these walls, not really comfortable with this one yet. There's a little bit more to it. There is kind of a sparkling citrus, maybe a bit of a smoky sweet incense. It is encased in this stinky oud. The oud does tone down though, so don't get me wrong, but I'm gonna give it some cool air to shine. So I will be reporting back on King Blue. Now this next one will upset some of you, but it shouldn't because of what I said at the beginning of the video. I enjoyed pretty much all these fragrances, but things had to be ranked. Jubilation 25. I know this is a favorite. This is iconic, a little bit of a cult classic. Many people complain because it has been reformulated. It is no longer a nuclear fragrance. And honestly, I like it more as a result. If it wasn't reformulated, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't own it. The first time I tried it, it was too strong. I had to scrub it off. Now that it's weaker, I'd like to say lighter, it's actually more palatable for me. Although it's not my favorite scent profile, I do really enjoy it and I find it super intriguing for how complex it is and how unique it is. This is a resinous sweet oud with blackberry, with honey. It does kind of smell the way that it looks. There is a golden rich feel. But again, not super strong these days. I get a good five to seven hours out of this when I wear it. And honestly, that's more than enough because I tend to save this for more formal occasions in the evening time. And that's about as long as I'll be out of the house, probably not even that long. So by the time I'm getting home, it's pretty light, close to the skin, and that's fine. I can go to bed without it strangling me in my sleep. Jubilation 25, good stuff. I look forward to giving this fragrance some more tries this winter and fall. I do like it. As a scent, it's beautiful, but its performance makes it a little bit tough for me to truly enjoy. Even one to two sprays of this in the wrong conditions can be lethal, at least in my experience. This is Royal Tobacco, again, gorgeous scent. A very unique take on tobacco. It has kind of a dried pruney feel with a smoky, incensey, earthy, sweet tobacco. Very powerful, very rich, dry, warm, 
and also cool a little bit. There's some cardamom in here too, adding a nice bit of duality. I love the composition. Cecile Zorokin is the perfumer. She's one of my favorites. I can objectively say this is masterful work, but it's so strong. So I look forward to giving this those one to two sprays on a cold day when I will not be setting foot indoors. I don't want it to change. I don't want it to be different. I wouldn't say if it was lighter, it'd be better. No, I'm not saying that at all. I accept it for what it is. I enjoy it, but there is a little asterisk for me. That is Royal Tobacco. Let me know if you dig it. This is called Lineage. And if you're familiar with the brand, don't be fooled by the bottle style. This is previously the women's bottle style, but Amouage is not really making that distinction anymore. This is also a very powerful fragrance perfumed by Kareem Vinchon. I really appreciate her work as well. I got at least one other fragrance in this lineup that she has done. And this is the most unique take on a semi-aquatic that I have tried. It's an aquatic fragrance that is accomplished without the use of overt aquatic ingredients. It doesn't smell exactly like seawater, but it does smell kind of like salty air, but there's a ton of incense and resins in here. Regardless, it comes off as rather fresh, but it's super rich, very rich and extremely powerful. Well, fill up a room easy and will last on your skin all day long. So you don't need more than two or three sprays of this. Otherwise you will not be making new friends that day. Amouage lineage, very unique stuff. I definitely appreciate it. We got a release from a couple years back. It came out alongside one other fragrance I'll be talking about later. And this is called Boundless Man. Another tobacco scent here that is way more palatable for me than Royal Tobacco. Again, not saying it's better, but for my taste, I can get closer to this. I can smell it without reservation and I just enjoy every minute that it's on my skin and it's around me. When you first spray this on, a juicy, slightly fresh blood orange, but not bright. It does not remind me of a bright sunny day. Blood orange is a darker, juicy citrus, a little bit of sweetness in there, some vanilla, definitely some dry earthy tobacco. There is a rough edge to the scent. The vanilla in here is very realistic. It is not creamy, sweet, delicious smelling vanilla. It's like the real deal. I know they have very expensive vanilla ingredient in this fragrance. It's a very unique and intriguing composition. It wears very elegant. I like to dress this up in the evening, especially during the fall and the winter. Let me know if you dig Boundless. Man, this stuff is special truly is. We got an oldie here. When I first tried this years ago, wasn't my thing. Now that I'm a Fougere fan, this is my thing. This is Bracken, and this is not a Fougere for everyone. It does have your typical characteristics. There is a semi-clean, fresh lavender, very aromatic. There are some spices, and there's even that creamy sweetness that you get from like a coumarin or a tonka bean. It does smell reminiscent of a barbershop style scent, but the spices in here are intense. Clove is really the face of the spicy element of this fragrance. If you don't like clove, you're not gonna like this scent. I used to not like clove, so I could not handle it, but now I dig this stuff. It is dry, it's very, very stuffy. That's the best way I can describe clove. If you happen to sample this fragrance, I advise you, do not spray it on your hand or a blotter and then shove it up your nose. It's gonna close up your entire nasal passage and you will suffocate. We don't want that. Waft it to you. It's gonna smell mature. It's gonna smell a little bit more elevated in terms of the type of personality that would rock this fragrance. It does smell perhaps a little vintage, but very much modern and very much in the style of Amouage with its presence. It is an unapologetic presence. Very classy stuff. That is Bracken. The fragrance that came out alongside Boundless by Cecile Zorokian, a master of these ambery fragrance profiles, this is material. This takes some of the same ingredients as you find in Boundless and it reproportions them. This is heavier on vanilla, a sweet tonka bean that does not smell edible. There's a fresh resinous quality to it and there is a little bit of a smoky woodiness from Gayak Wood in the background, that very slight barbecue feel. It sounds terrible, but it's very slight and it's just a supportive texture to the scent. It is primarily an ambery vanilla that is sweet, but again, not gourmand leaning with a resinous smoky feel behind it. Perfectly unisex, very elegant stuff. I love this for fall and winter and my wife does too. That is material. From Karine Vinchon. This one's not for everyone. This is a polarizing choice, but it does happen to be my fourth favorite in my collection, at least at this current time. This is Overture Man. 
Oh, Overture, man. This was love at first sniff, and it is a polarizing one, as I said. When you smell this, either it's gonna draw you in and blow you away, or it's gonna just push you all the way away because it is harsh. There's an animalic quality to this that might tickle the nose in the wrong way if it's not really your taste, and that is okay if it's not, but it just struck me. For some reason, it pulled me in. This is cognac, sweet, boozy cognac with lots of spices, smoke, dark woods, and animalic notes, as I said. It smells the way it looks here. This is evening. This is dressed up in black. This is three to four sprays max. Very confident, very authoritative. It smells intentional. This is not gonna be a compliment magnet, but it will leave an impact and an impression as long as you don't overspray it. If you do, it's not good. I'm warning you, more is not always better. Let me know if you enjoy Amouage Overture, man. This stuff, I don't wear it all the time, but when I do, it captures me. Love this stuff. This one has been a mainstay in my Amwash collection for several years now. I think I've turned several of you onto this. Some of you have really enjoyed it. Some of you hate it. And that's about what I would expect. It is a little polarizing. Again, a little bit on the mature smelling side. You have to love a very green, mossy, woody fragrance. If that's not your thing, I still advise you to sample it because you gotta at least experience it, but I'm not guaranteeing you're gonna love it. And again, don't put it up your nose and then get mad at me saying it's bad. This is Beach Hut, man. Very green, mint, woody vetiver. <sighs> so good. Very, very green and minty. Very realistic mint, but it is intense in its freshness and also intense in its woodiness and dryness. There's a little bit of a saving grace of sweetness, a touch of myrrh resin that kind of acts as a glue that glues like the woods and the greens together and kind of ties it into the house of Amouage. The idea that most of their fragrances contain a resinous presence, but it's powerful. Like many fragrances from the house, this is a strong scent personality. This is one I don't spray more than three or four times. I save it for the spring and the fall, maybe the winter, but not really my go-to in the winter. And I like to dress it up a little bit more elegantly. Maybe something like this, even during the daytime, I think it's perfect for that type of function. But again, maybe a little bit mature. So sample first, I'll have links down below. Beach Hut Man, man, I always look so weird with these clear bottles. I'm trying to look serious, but I know you can't take me seriously when I look like this. Number two, perhaps the best seller from the brand and maybe the most popular fragrance in the fragrance community from this brand has got to go to Reflection Man. This is the one that people recommend first when they recommend getting in. I know I look so dumb. Ah, I'm gonna hold it here. I know this is one people recommend first when getting into the house. I would say it is the least characteristically amouage, if you're asking me, which is so ironic. The rest of the offerings from this house are nothing like this fragrance. This doesn't really represent the brand. Nonetheless, it's amazing. This is a soft, masculine, white floral, a little powdery, a little creamy, a little sweet, fresh, posh, elegant, classy. Some people say it smells like a more complex and niche version of something like Le Mans from Jean-Paul Gaultier. I would agree with that. It does have that vibe without being overly minty and overly vanilla sweet. This is a very round scent profile, very soft and cottony in a way. My bottle here, which is a little older, performs very well. I don't need more than three sprays, four sprays at the max. I'm smelling it for 15 hours and then smelling it nonstop all day as long as I don't spray the front of my neck here. Love the wearing experience here. This is one that my wife does not love until the deep dry down. So if I'm gonna wear this, I will make sure that if we're gonna be gone for most of the day, on a day like that, I'll wear a fragrance like this and know that in that 10th, 11th hour when I see her later, it'll be dried down but still present, very classy, and she really appreciates it on me. And she often forgets what it is, even though she knows the opening, the dry down. She's like, ooh, what are you wearing? I'm like, Reflection Man. And she's like, oh, I like it. Reflection Man. Good stuff. And what could be my number one? Those of you who watch my videos already know what this is. I've been proclaiming it this year, especially. This is still my current favorite from the house. It's one that I've worn quite a bit. It's one that I never get tired of wearing. Every time I spray this on, you have those few fragrances in your collection. I know you can attest to this where you're like, I have no regrets. I'm so glad I wore this today. And that happens every time I wear this. I never wish I wore something else. And that is Enclave. And this is not everyone's favorite. It is a little polarizing, which actually still surprises me. I find this to be a very likable scent profile, albeit 
elegant and complex, but nothing really edgy or hard to wrap your mind around. But to some people, it smells like strong, ashy toothpaste, apparently. I don't really get that vibe though, but there's a lot of mint in here. But this is a different type of mint experience than we have in Beach Hut, man. This is a little bit more sweet. There is a resinous labdanum that's almost leathery, ashy, pretty dark. You do have a fresh, spicy cardamom at the face of the scent. This fragrance is a beautiful duality of cool and warm, similar to how we saw Royal Tobacco, but worlds apart here. It's supposed to represent a cooling fjord running through the Musandam Peninsula in Oman. You have the heat of the sun warming the rock and then you have the cooling water running through cooling off the rock and it's that meeting of those two ideas and it's represented well here it's a very strong fragrance it's again super unique and i love to wear it for almost any occasion day or night i find it to be ironically pretty versatile even though it's so different let me know if you enjoy enclave currently i guess my favorite but not by massive margins so anyway links down below to check out enclave let me know what you think of these Amouage fragrances, if you've tried or own any of them. Once again, I know there's many that were not represented here. I plan on getting more. I have a short list of more Amouages I'm going to get hopefully in the next year or so. So more to come. Once again, links to every fragrance down in the description. And thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.